Glory to God. Glory to God. Welcome to Christian Counseling. Lesson number nine, approaching counselor and client sessions. Now what we begin to do, we in the earlier part of the course, we were dealing with Christian counseling theory. Now we're transitioning from theory to practice. There are key elements that are most important to experiencing success in a counseling session. There's some important things you must you must understand. The first one is it is the responsibility of every counselor to make sure that they are prepared. Preparation is going to be the most important thing. You have to make sure that you are ready to deal with your client, to help your client, to assist your client. Preparation is important. So it is the responsibility of every counselor to make sure they are prepared. Focus is the next thing. You have to be focused. You have to be have your mind in the right place to give your count, your client the attention that they need. Prepare, focus, and the third thing in the right attitude. In the right attitude, as they approach each session, as a counselor, I should never switch the responsibility on the client for the session uh, uh, to be in the right to be prepared, focused. And have the right attitude. It's my responsibility to be prepared. As a counselor, I have to make sure that I've done the groundwork, the, the, the prep work. I've documented. I've, I've, I've gotten familiar with the tool that I'm going to use and the, the psychological technique I'm going to use. I'm familiar with the biblical principles that I'm going to insert and that I have to make sure that I'm ready to deal with my cl client. That's my job to be prepared. The hardest part of counseling is going to be t the thing I call two P's. The two P's are preparation and paperwork. Those are going to be the, the hardest part. Getting ready for a session and doing the paperwork, the documentation of it. So now I'm going to talk about the goals for the counselor, the goals for the counselor. Number one, observe the client during the freedom session to identify and initiate. Observe the client during the freedom session to identify and initiate. That word initiate uh, means that here's your goal is to get them involved, to get them started, to get them to opening up, to get them to communicating, to get them in this exchange of conversation, to get them to that place, to get them started. That's your goal. Your goal is to identify and initiate, to pick up on things that you need to document, but to get the client involved so that you can help the client. You can not help a client if the client is going to be reserved and keep themselves from you. And that's fine. You have some clients that'll be like that for a number of sessions, but at some point they have to, they have to open up. You have to get them involved. You have to identify and initiate. The next goal is increase your understanding of the subject of counseling. This is what we call the three R system. The three R system is review, read, and research. If I'm counseling about substance abuse, then I need to review, read, and research. I need to take a look at some things. I need to study up on some things. If I'm dealing with a client that has gone through uh, grief therapy from a, a, a bereavement, then I need to I need to study some things, look up some things. If I'm dealing with a client that is dealing with substance abuse of, of, of some other kind, then I need to study that. If I'm dealing with a client that is going through a divorce, then I need to study that. I need to make sure that I'm well-versed to be able to help. So I have to increase my understanding of the subject of counseling. That's my goal. As a counselor, it is my goal to increase my understanding of the subject of counseling. Number three, I must develop vocabulary to describe in a professional manner the activity of the subject of counseling. I have to develop the vocabulary. I have to sound like I know what I'm talking about. I can't sound like I'm not professional and I can't sound like I don't know what I'm doing. I have to make sure that I develop the vocabulary so that I can sound like I know what I'm talking about. That's an important point right there. I have to develop the vocabulary to describe in a professional manner the activity of the subject of counseling. Here's my next goal. Number four, my goal is to identify cues, C-U-E-S, cues and symptoms. Cues, C-U-E-S and symptoms. This is a goal of mine to identify cues and symptoms. I have to document what is said, what is experienced, and what I observe. I don't just write down what the client says. I also write down what, what I picked up on. What I observed. The counselor should make record of the thought patterns, the emotional experiences, and the experiences discussed 
with the client. The counselor should make record of all of these things. So it's important that, that I, I identify cues and system, symptoms. This is my goal. When I approach the session, I want to identify and initiate. I want to get the client involved. I want to have uh, increase my understanding of the subject that I'm counseling on. I want to develop a vocabulary to describe in a professional manner the activity of this subject of counseling. I want to identify cues and symptoms. And then number five, I want to identify areas of vulnerability. This is my goal as a counselor. When I approach the session, I want to identify areas of vulnerability. Areas that are painful, that are darkened, or that the client may say that's off limits. I don't want to talk about that. Or the client doesn't get it, give much information on that. I want to identify those areas of vulnerability and I want to make note of them. And I want to come back and review them later. The sixth thing that I want to do. I want to identify triggers to those areas. I want to identify triggers to those areas. What do I mean by triggers to those areas? Uh, reinforcers or primary reinforcers that trigger and permit a certain thought pattern or behavior. This can also be done by identifying in antecedents that, that has produced a particular that has produced a particular consequence. In other words, what is making the client act like this? I want to be able to identify those triggers. I want to say the client gets very angry, but this is what makes the client angry. When this happened, the client gets very angry. It is my job to identify the triggers. Um, number seven, my seventh goal is very simple. It is to develop a treatment plan that identify the problem, clearly expressing the prognosis, and procedure for recovery by establishing both long-term and short-term goals. So I'm going to have a long-term goal and then I'm going to have session objectives. And in this treatment plan, I am going to be able to point out what the problem is, how I plan on treating the problem, and what I plan on doing each session. That's the treatment plan. So I have to develop a treatment plan. These are my goals as a counselor. These are things that I seek to do as a counselor. Now, let me say this. <clears throat> counselor activities assist, a counsel, the counselor activities are this. Assist the client to identify issues concerning the subjects of counseling from the past, as well as as a vulnerability and bring to resolution or deliverance. That's your job as a counselor. Help the client. You don't do it for the client. You help the client identify the issues concerning the subject of counseling from the past, as well as areas of vulnerability and bring to resolution or deliverance. So this is what you do. You do more than just sitting down, communicating and talking to people. You do more than that. You have to understand you help people to identify the problem and you help them to overcome the problem, to resolve the problem or to be delivered from it. The next thing that a counselor does, a counselor should use opportunities in, in individual or group counseling to help the client practice acceptance of those areas that cannot be changed. There are some things that you just can't change. Some things that, that are not going to change if you have a client that, that, has, that has gone through a divorce and, and lost everything. Or you had a client that has lost a family member or something like that. You can't go back and change that. So you have to help the client to change what can be changed and what cannot be changed. You have to help the client that, to understand that. That, that I should change how I see it. When you begin to change your perspective of the problem, then sometimes the problem is not as major or as, as, as big as you think it would be. Sometimes it began to be smaller and more minute than what you thought it was because your perspective changed. And that's my job, to lead the client to a place where the ch client is making changes, but whatever can't be changed, that the client is changing their perspective on it. So let's talk about the goals for the session. Now that we've talked about the goals for the, 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 the counselor, we're going to talk about the goals for your sessions. What am I looking to do in my counseling sessions? Number one, I'm looking to correct irrational thinking. I am looking to correct irrational thinking. Correcting irrational thinking means that I identify specific areas of cognitive distortion. We call it stinking thinking. A bad thought will produce a bad behavior. Sometimes the relationships that you will be counseling will be because they have bad thoughts that are producing their way of behaving. So I have to correct irrational thinking. 
This is how you correct irrational thoughts. You identify the, the areas that they have, the bad thoughts. You identify it. You point it out. You challenge irrational thoughts with reality and the truth. You use scripture, but you ask them, is this actually what is said or this is how you see it? And you also challenge it with scripture. The word of God is truth. And then this is how you also correct irrational thoughts. You develop appropriate substitute self-statements and behaviors for irrational ones. In other words, you tell the client, the client thinks that they're nothing and nobody and they go through anxiety and depression because of it. Then you have to, you have to seize that thought, point it out that that's a bad thought. You'd have to take it. You'd have to challenge it. And then you'd have to change it. You'd have to give them something else to believe, something to confess, something to think in replace of that. So the next thing that you're looking to do, excuse me, <clears throat> the next thing that you're looking to do in your session is improve conquering despondent thoughts and symptoms to improve it. You might be asking, how do I do that? This is how you do it. You identify inappropriate response to feelings of the subject of counseling. If it's, um, if it's anxiety and they're afraid of a particular thing, you point out that fear is not something that they should have in this situation. The next thing you do, you reassure your presence, your support, and the achievement of the goal. You can do this. I'm right here with you. You can conquer this. This is what you do. Let's map out a plan. The third thing that you do, you learn techniques to reduce the activity and control of the subject of counseling. In some cases, you begin to stop the thought. You switch the thought, create visualizations, uh, progressive muscle uh, relaxation, deep breathing and stuff like that. You teach the client how to how to deal with these things. Sometimes in anger management, they will teach you to count down from 10. Um, these are these are techniques to reduce the activity and control the subject of counseling. So this is how you improve conquering despondent thoughts and sy symptoms. The third the third goal for your session is to improve insight and understanding, to improve insight and understanding. For instance, increase understanding of relationship between underlying vulnerability, triggers, feelings, thoughts, choices, or behaviors. Increase understanding of relationship between underlying vulnerability, triggers, feelings, thoughts, choices, or behaviors. Now, in order to improve insight and understanding, I am going to show I'm going to have to show them that you begin to feel like this only when you begin to think like this. So I show the connection between the two. The next thing I have to increase understanding of the pattern or cycle of problem behaviors leading to substance abuse and others acting out. So I got to open their eyes up to say, all right, every time you drink or every time you do this or every time you act like this, this is what happens. It's a cycle. I got to show them that I have to get there, get them to see that. And this leads me to my fourth and final goal for counseling. My fourth goal for counseling is develop trust and maintain influence with the client. That's my goal to develop trust and maintain influence with the client. How do I do that? This is how you do it. You use each session to build trust. The counselor must understand that trust must be earned. You have to earn trust. It is not a gift. Therefore, each session must be viewed as an individual brick that works to build a building of trust. Trust has to be earned. The counselor must understand that trust must be that trust must be earned. It is not a gift. Therefore, each session must be viewed as an individual brick that works to build the building of trust. I don't take for granted any moment when I'm dealing with trust. Sometimes when you're dealing with kids, one of the best way to get them to trust you, kids spell the word love, L-O-V-E. They spell it as P-L-A-Y, play. So if you're counseling a young person and you're trying to get them to open up, then don't just try to talk to them. Sit down and play Uno with them. And as you're playing Uno, ask a few questions. And as they're playing, they'll begin to open up with you. So we're going to go into point B. Clearly define goals, both long-term and short-term. Defining these goals, you should address the activity, whether, whether progressive or digressive. Reward and acknowledge the achievement of all goals, whether long-term or short-term. I say it this way. You have to celebrate all progress. That's my, that's my goal in a counseling session, that I want to build trust 
with them. I want to I want to define the goals and let them know that all right, this is what we're doing and address the activity that I see them progressing or I see them going backwards. And I want to reward and acknowledge the achievement of all goals. Now, point C is important. I have to maintain honesty. Maintain honesty. Prepare for each session and make sure the client has my full attention. I have to maintain honesty with the client, prepare for each session, and make sure the client has my full attention. These are the goals for my session. Those are the goals for me as a counselor, and I pray that you adopt them as well. Thank you for tuning in for lesson number nine, approaching counselor and client sessions. We thank you for this opportunity. God bless. Have a great day.